Hi, I'm Cindy with Rustic Art. Today's tutorial, how to make a wire cross. I've been designing and creating crosses for Rustic Art since 2003. I've learned a lot of tips and mistakes, and I'm going to share both of them with you today in this tutorial. This is a beaded wire cross. It's three inches. Um, the cross frame beneath the beads is what we're going to be making today. Uh, you need something to attach the beads to, so we've got to start from the beginning. And the materials that you will need for today's project include a yardstick or ruler. I prefer a yardstick for this tutorial because I'll be measuring yards of wire. Needle nose pliers. You'll need some clippers. Whatever you're most comfortable with. Doesn't matter which ones as long as they can, they can clip the wire good for you. And then you'll need some copper wire. Uh, 16 gauge is what we're using today because it's um, flexible and easy on your hands and I have an abundance of it. I'm going to measure out a couple of yards of wire for this project and then you'll measure your three inches of wire for your cross. Now something to remember, there's the three inches, pick it up and pinch it between your fingers and then you're going to fold it over one time. Something to remember on how much wire to use for each cross is um, I use about a, a yard per inch. So you've got your three inches there, you're going to pick it up and you're going to actually do another fold again and that's what it's going to look like when you're finished. So you fold it once and then pick it up and you're going to fold it over again and the loop there at the top, the nice little brown loop, that's going to be the top of your cross. You're going to picture between your uh, finger and your thumb and we're going to begin to make the cross the crossbars of the cross for a three inch cross I think two inch a two inch span across is quite adequate measure about that's eh, about an inch and a quarter down and then you're going to bend your wire off to the side measure about an inch and then fold it at the inch mark fold it back in toward the center and then grasp it between your finger and thumb to hold it secure There you go, and then now we're going to do the other side the same way. Measure out about an inch, pinch it between your finger and thumb, then you're going to move it, you're going to bend it in toward the center, and then grasp the center with your finger and thumb to secure it so it doesn't get out of control on you. You're going to have some, some overage, some excess wire, obviously, um, and that wire, you're going to grasp that underneath the cross with your finger and you're going to take that wire and actually that's the wire you're going to wrap and begin wrapping around the bottom of the cross. Right now your cross looks like this and see how it kind of looks wonky and because you're not holding it. So I'll pick it up again, hold it and you're going to take that wire and you're going to wrap it around. You're going to wrap it kind of tightly. I don't think you can wrap it too tight but I know you can wrap it too loose. So just work on your tension. It's like anything else, crochet knitting. It's got tension and you may have to try it a couple of times to get it the way you want. You're going to work that all the way down to the bottom and there's a bubble of loop there. I like to remove that so I kind of pinch it together. That way you have it, it's not skinny at the top and big at the bottom. You have one uniform uh, line. So kind of squeeze that together with your pliers. Of course you can leave it if you wish. It's your it's your creation so you can do as you wish. Uh, but for me I like to pinch it together. So then you're going to continue working the wire all the way down to the bottom of the cross. Once you get there you're just going to reverse your, your uh, wrapping and go back up to the center. And then you're going to take the wire and you're going to begin uh, wrapping around the arms. I like to kind of take my wire and wrap it behind and then come back around the arm. I start on the right hand side because I'm right handed so that feels natural to me. So I begin wrapping to the right and you'll see there's loops. The loops are kind of open there. I will pinch those together just to get a really nice uniform look. Now you would do the same as you did on the bottom. You go all the way to the end, come back toward the center and then you begin on the left side. Now you might notice that one side of your arm is a little bit longer than the other. You might want to measure it right about now. 
and see I have gone over just a tad bit. So you're going to want to take your needle nose pliers and you're going to take the end of that and kind of fold it over a little bit. One mistake to never do is don't clip it because if you clip too much, you get it too short, you can't grow the wire back. If you fold it over and you're too short, you can always open it back up and, and you know, adjust it to the length that you need. So I've taken the pliers, I've crimped it a little bit, folded it in, made a nice little tight crimp. So now I can continue wrapping it all the way to the end. Now it looks perfect. Well, kind of. And then come back toward the center and you're going to start on the top part of the cross now, looping it around and wrapping the cross. Now, on the top of this cross, we're not going to pinch the top together. We're going to leave a nice open loop. So you work all the way up to the top, almost. Leave a nice little loop so you can thread your ribbon through or your, um, if you wanted to use it for a necklace, be a nice necklace, pin it for a necklace. But you need a ribbon for ornament to hang from something to give us a gift. So you're going to wrap that all the way back down to the center now. And you're still going to have quite a bit of excess wire left over. Now you're just going to take the excess wire and you're going to work that all the way down the base of the cross again for added stability because remember I said the copper wire is very pliable and easy to work with. That also means it doesn't make a real stable cross form unless it's got a lot of wire in it. In it. So you're going to wrap it all the way down to the bottom and back up again and you may have just a little bit extra. That's okay. You can at this point wrap it all the way in and just add it into the cross. You can clip it off or you can leave it as a little element, a little curly cue. Do your final measurements. Looks good on the span. Looks good on the three inches. I did good. Usually I go over or under, and but you know what the heck, it's handmade. That's what happens. Um, now we're going to take the little excess and grab it with our needle nose pliers, and we're going to curl inward to make a little swirly, little cute element for the cross. These are kind of fun because you can actually add a little charm from it if you wish. You can um, hammer it down and make it flat a hammered look. Not the cross, just the little curly cube. It's kind of fun. To I love hanging little things from them. There's the back of it. Now again, remember this isn't going to be perfect because it's handmade, but that's what makes it unique and makes it wonderful to you um, and to the person who's receiving it. So that's what your 3 inch cross is going to look like once you're finished. And the beading will be the next step, but that's going to be in the next tutorial. I really appreciate you watching today. This is fun to teach and share with um, all of you and my readers. So thanks for watching and um, I'd like for you to visit our blog if you want to find more things to make at rusticartblog.com. Also, we're on Facebook and Twitter.